Hello, yes, we're in handheld mode today, and I'm going to be doing my very first video response. Because someone made a video response that apparently was intended to be a video response to my video, Do You Believe That The Bible Is The Unedited Inspired Word Of God? It went out of my inbox before I had a chance to approve it, because it's my policy to always approve. I feel the truth will, you know, stand a better case than any lie or manipulation, but whatever, I don't know what the error there was, but anyway, I still got the email about this being a response, so I watched it. I realized immediately that it was on the side of the Bible, but it was still kind of disappointing to see that there was absolutely nothing that actually addressed the point I made in the video, which is, in case you don't want to go see for yourself, that it's not very likely that every single word, what with the writing down and the multiple translations, that every word is still exactly what the original author, be it man or God, intended. So anyway, I'm going to do this in a slightly unorthodox way for video responses. I know the custom is to edit these things, but my editing software, at least the one I use mostly, is not being very cooperative at the moment in this regard, so what I'll do is film myself listening to it and responding to it, so that's what you're in for. The following is a presentation of God Questions Ministries. Do I have to believe the Bible is inerrant to be saved? That really didn't so much address my point as kind of sidestep it, you know? I, I wasn't really saying that you might not be saved. That wasn't really... I was just looking to make people question it. Whether or not they leave the faith is entirely up to them. I just don't think that one should go on believing something without having examined it. That's a really bad path to be moving on, but let's continue. We are not saved by believing in the inspiration or inerrancy of the Bible. Which is good, because there's a lot of weird crap in the Bible. We are saved by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior from sin. Of course we are. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9. Ooh, reference, very good. Too bad you're using reference to your own book. That kind of... It goes against the point of using references, but but it's nice that you're using... I, I see what you're doing there. You're trying to use your own minor source of literature to back up your stance. The parts of your own literature that you don't ignore. At the same time, though, it is only through the Bible that we learn about Jesus Christ and His... And that's because there is no historical evidence. Yeah. Death and resurrection on our behalf. Second... Ooh. You owe Jesus big time. He went home to daddy for your sake. Corinthians 5 verse 21. We do not have to believe everything in the Bible in order... Again, lucky. ...to be saved, but we do have to believe in Jesus Christ, who is proclaimed by the Bible. Once again, circular logic, what religious folk are really good at. We should definitely hold to the Bible as the Word of God, and should absolute... Yeah, because that has to do with the whole thing of, you know, it might actually not be because... If you stop to wonder about languages, if you know just a little bit about languages, just if you know two languages, if you know a couple of words in two languages, try to look at how many different meanings they might have in the 
two different languages. Try to look at the importance of certain things in certain cultures. And you'll pretty soon stop believing that a book that has been translated several times could possibly still hold one exact meaning. They believe everything the Bible teaches. When people are first saved, they generally know very little about the Bible. And that's because the more you know, the less you believe. Salvation is a process that begins with an understanding of our sinful state, not... You're bad. God and the Bible are good. Remember that. Because you've probably already been told a lot of times by religious people that that's how it is an understanding of the inerrancy of the Bible. Once again highlighting, you shouldn't be asking questions. Why are you asking questions? You're the one who's bad. Not the Bible. Not God. Our consciences tell us that we are not able to stand before a holy God on our own merits. In other words, if you do think that you're a moral person, even if you aren't religious, you're of course wrong, and you have a horrible conscience, horrible sense of right and wrong. We know that we are not righteous enough to do that, so we turn to him and accept the sacrifice of his son on the cross in payment of our sin. Once again, guilt trip. We place our full trust in him. From that point on... Our full trust. So, once again, don't ask questions. Why are you asking questions? It's it's perfect. It's the word of God. It's God, and he's perfect. Apologies for the lag. So what else is new? How have you been holding up? How's the wife? Well, this is awkward. Maybe this is God's punishment. Okay, three men walk into a bar. And none of them could get my computer working. Those are DVDs and games behind me, in case you're wondering. Completely new nature, pure and undefiled by sin. God's that stuff washes right off. Holy Spirit lives within our hearts, sealing us for eternity. It's like a separate immune system, guarding you from sin. We go forward from that point. Lo well, maybe in one sense, but in most senses we go backward. Loving and obeying God more and more each day and questioning him less and less, and being led more and more astray from actual morals and values. Part of this going forward is feeding daily on his word to grow... Mmm. It's like a good cereal. It's what the athletes eat to get nice, big, and strong. Oh, and strengthen our walk with him. If you walk with him every day, won't your feet get really sore? The Bible alone has the power to perform this miracle in our life. Of course. I mean, what, you think you thought there was more than one way? If we believe and trust in the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ as taught in the Bible, we are saved. When we Yeah, speaks for itself. We trust in Jesus Christ though. The Holy Spirit will work in our hearts and minds and will In other words, if you don't feel the Holy Spirit doing that, then you haven't completely accepted God into your heart and mind. Convince us that the Bible is true and is to be believed. Once again, do not ask questions. That's not what you're here for. That's not what you're believing for. Second Timothy 3 verses 16 and 17. More references. If there are doubts in our minds about the inerrancy of Scripture, the best way to handle that is to ask God to give us a of course it is. What else? If you think that someone is lying to you, you should just go to them and ask, 
hey, are you lying to me? And once they say, no, I'm not lying to you, in spite of all the evidence against this, you should just believe them, especially if they're God. Assurance about his word and confidence in his word. He is more than willing to answer those who seek him honestly with their whole hearts. Matthew 7. Honestly with their whole hearts. In other words, if you aren't getting an answer, you must not be accept accepting him honestly and with your whole heart. Verses 7 and 8. God Questions Ministry seeks to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ by providing biblical answers to today's questions. Th online at gotquestions.org. Now that is surprising. I, maybe this is a nitpick, but I really despise that they hijacked that particular web address, Got Questions. Yes, because if you just need to have someone continue to keep you in as a sheep, then surely that's the most important question. You know, it's not like there are actual questions with actual, proper, truthful answers out there. Anyway, those looking, yeah, I already did post text responses. I later decided that I wanted to do a full-on video response also, or if you want to call this a full-on video response. Anyway, that's it for now. Goodbye.